James Pelton. I hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. Um, I always have to look up at the calendar right when I start that sentence because I can't remember what day it actually is. But it is Tuesday, and I'm excited to have uh, only Burns on today. And I apologize. This was supposed to be about 45 minutes earlier, but I rugged myself and uh, missed it. So I can no longer get upset at guests who don't show up because I didn't show up for my own AMA. So thank you for being patient with me and flexible. I appreciate it very much. Um, if you're in the audience, what I need from you guys, uh, I already see a bunch of people with, with fire emojis in the uh, comments. So that's good. Uh, but hit the like button as we're going. And let's do, everybody hit, do some fire emojis. Look at the pyros, light them up. Um, it reminds me, I don't know if you guys ever played StarCraft, but it reminds me of uh, the fire bats in StarCraft. Let's light them up. I don't, maybe that's only me who played StarCraft. No, dude, um, I used to mod for Brood War, so oh, okay. I'm, I'm right there with you. There Let's you go. go. Let's light them up. Pro, uh, Protoss. Protoss. Yeah, there you go. Oh, man. We could... We could probably do our own AMA on uh, StarCraft, but yeah, maybe let's not do that. Let's not get me down that road. Um, so can you go ahead and start out? People know who I am. I'm James. Please hit like. Can you go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we'll start talking a little bit about the, the project? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Cyril Kier. Uh, I'm a publicly doxed individual, and I'm also KYC'd with Obsidian Council. And, uh, you know, I've been... In the DeFi space for about four years now, I've uh, been trading blue chip cryptos for about the last nine years and stocks for about the last 13. And I've uh, been managing businesses since I was uh, 18 years old. So that was about 16 years ago. Got that youthful face, but I'm given away by my gray hair there. <laughs> yeah, right. No, that's don't you hate it when your hair gives you away? Yeah, yeah uh, all the time. <laughs> yes. So, okay, very cool. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here for the website. So, again, assuming I know there's a lot of people in the audience who know what Only Burns is because they're already doing the fire thing. Um, but can you kind of give an elevator pitch, assuming someone's never heard of this? What is Only Burns setting out to do? Yeah, so Only Burns is setting out to be able to benefit other protocols as well as our holders in the same at the same time, right? Our whole thing is that we buy back and burn tokens of other projects, creating that price appreciation on their token and reducing their supply. We can also do it for NFT projects as well, uh, reducing that circulating supply of their NFTs if their community votes and wins a buyback and burn. So we're bringing burn wars to the space of uh, real fierce competition, uh, communities being able to prove our community is better than yours. <laughs> there you go. Okay. No, this is super interesting. Burn is a service. So I love everything as a service. Um, so really a big fan of this. Um, can you kind of explain, so how exactly does this work? Like what's the benefit, um, for the protocol? What's the benefit for you guys? Like why is, why is burning? Why would someone want to do this? Yeah. So when I, uh, we all saw it during the rebase season and meme coin season of last year and the year prior where these protocols would do these big burns, right? And they're like, oh, let's go. We just burnt $60 million of our token. Uh, and everyone would get excited about it until they realized that that was just from their treasury. It has nothing to do with the price, right? Because what if you are doing a buy from the liquidity pool, that increases the price. And so our protocol, we do those transactions directly to the LP, uh, which boosts the price of their token. And then we're throwing the tokens away to the dead wallet on whatever network they're on so that they can never be accessed or sold again. Uh, so that's the benefit that we bring to protocols. Plus, we have a lot of awesome marketing material that gets shared around uh, as we're spreading that flame. And so it's great for protocols to get their name out there, too. Uh, and then the value to our ecosystem is our token cyber deflationary because 10% of cells on our token burns itself. And when people are voting with their O burn, that O burn is burnt. So for protocols to keep trying to capture those buy back and burn pots that we have each month, they're buying the token, using some of it to vote with. So that's again, reducing our supply. So our holders, they're getting a bigger piece of that total supply pie. Uh, and, uh, you know, our treasury 
once that is in effect after the sale of our NFTs is complete around the end of March, it's going to be taking 30% of the revenue that it generates and it's going to be buying the Oburn token back from the liquidity pool taking another 30% of the revenue it generates, pairing it with that O'Burn and adding it to the LP to deepen that liquidity. So we have that deflation and price appreciation on our token uh, benefiting our holders. Meanwhile, we're helping other protocols get forced appreciation on their price and deflation of their supply, which means that there's less tokens to go around. So inherently they should be worth more. Okay, very good. And so then do these protocols then pay you? Is that where the revenue is coming from? Is they pay you to do this service? So the cool thing is uh, what they're doing is they're buying the tokens to do this. Their communities and the projects themselves. Just as an example, uh, we've had several protocols uh, make commits to our pre-sale, ranging all the way from $10,000 upwards of $50,000 per protocol. And they're buying up some of the Oburn token at this fixed price so that they can then fight for our mega buyback and burn event that we're doing when we launch our protocol. Okay. No, that's good. I like that. That's clever. You're, you're a clever guy. Um, so let me just make sure I understand. So people, they buy the tokens and then their name kind of gets thrown in the ring for, Hey, you might be the one that we go burn a whole bunch of your NFTs or a whole bunch of your, your tokens or whatever. Um, and then are you only burning from that one project that wins or are you going to be burning a little bit from all of them or how does, how is that going to kind of work? Yeah. So it's the top five on the leaderboard. First place gets the largest buyback and burn second place, then third place, fourth place, fifth place. That way, uh, cause we all know bigger protocols with larger communities, they're going to be the ones who are able to duke it out and get that first place. Right. And so by having a logarithmically scaling uh, buyback and burn that we perform, that distribution of funds across the top five projects, we're able to make sure that smaller protocols that are maybe coming in fifth place or fourth place or third place will see a similar price impact on their chart for placing on that leaderboard. Okay. And I, I always hate when I ask questions when the answer is actually on the screen um, that I'm showing, I should at least do this so people don't know that I just can't read. Um, no, so that's awesome. So then is it, once someone is in the running, is it going to be the same projects each month then? Or is it like you have to put a new, you buy new tokens to be in for the following month? Yeah, so the voting resets every month. So what happens is any of the purchase volume that occurs on our token during that month, we have a 10% buy tax, which is actually collected in BUSD due to our relationship with Kyoto Swap. Uh, they're doing some special routing to a smart contract we had made that will allow us to collect the tax in BUSD, not Oburn. That way our protocol is not having to sell our tokens to get those funds to then use for the buyback and burns. And that collects in the burn fund wallet for the over the period of the entire month. So that burn pot gets bigger and bigger and bigger as more protocols are duking it out, fighting with one another in the burn wars for that final buyback and burn pot for those top five projects. Okay, very good. And Pi, if you're watching, I'm so sorry, Pi. I watched the comments and he started saying Cyril's a, a scammer, and so I just banned him. I didn't realize that he was just joking. So Pi, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. I don't know how to unban you. We'll uh, we'll try to get you back sometime, though. Um, yeah, Pi is one of those one of those people that uh, loves to hate you, but loves you at the same time. Uh, he's actually in like the Cardinal House where I help people learn how to trade, and you know he's he's been in uh, in in uh, only Burns for a while now. So yeah, he, he, that's just how he jokes, I suppose. Yeah. So, so Pi, I'm so sorry. We'll have to get you back. Um, so can you talk, you already mentioned this a little bit, but what kind of traction have you gotten so far? Have you seen a lot of interest? Um, has it been mostly bigger projects or has it been smaller projects or a combination or what have you kind of seen? So it's been a great healthy combination, right? Uh, and just yesterday alone, I got seven projects on board, uh, who are going to be partaking in our pre-sale. They're going to be, uh, rallying their community to kind of match what they're doing. Uh, because that $50,000 uh, 
mega burn that we're doing as our hello world moment, uh, that's just going to get bigger as buy volume is taking place. So if we have like half a million in buy volume come in there for the rest of the that voting period, uh, that could theoretically then become a hundred thousand dollar buyback and burn pot for other protocols. So, and I love too what you said. I think another benefit, big benefit for protocols is just the hype around it. You know, like, hey, community, let's get together. Let's, uh, you know, make, let's make, let's burn ours, you know? And I, I think that's a big part of this. And that's a big part of what's going to make you guys successful as well. Yeah. So, and then again, let me just show you just so people understand the process here. Um, but they a project wants to do a buyback and burn perform on their projects. So they have to buy the Oburn tokens to make that happen. So that's going to be really good for the tokens here on only burns. Um, then they're going to be, um, yeah. How does the voting process work? Can you maybe explain that a little bit more? Is it just as simple as holders can vote and is it each wallet gets one vote or how does the voting process work? Yeah, absolutely. So we set it up this way to avoid someone gaming it, right? Because there's always malicious actors in the space uh, who maybe launch a scam token and then try to vote for them, you know, so that they can, you know, get this big buyback and burn and then essentially run away with the money, right? Uh, so the way that it works is let's say you buy a $500 worth of Oburn uh, and you're in a couple of different projects that are competing in the burn wars and you want to see them win, right? Because you've got a big bag over there and you want to see the value of that bag go up, whether you're in MDB, Sphere, EMP, et cetera, you're like, doesn't matter which one. Um, you would then allocate some of the Oburn that you purchased to back your vote with weight. And as soon as you submit your vote, it sends the Oburn that you're backing your vote with weight for to the dead wallet so it's the one one time use for each oburn token that you're allocating to that buyback and burn okay interesting so there's going to be even more uh burn on the token from that as well wow okay yeah like it's I said, a lot of burning going on hyper deflationary we are yeah. only burns right <laughs> yep that's right no that's a good name um and hootie which good to see you hootie i haven't seen you around as much but good to see you um, he asked, would something like Logan Paul's zoo be something that can sign up? Is it pretty much just any NFT collection or any protocol? Are there any limitations to what can or can't be signed up for something like this? So there's no real limitations uh, because it's entirely community driven, right? You know, protocols, obviously they can vote for themselves too, right? But let's say the community uh over at a different project is stronger than that protocol they are coming in they're doing purchase of o burn the burn vote for their uh for that project and then they wind up winning right something like logan paul zoo yeah absolutely uh because with an nft project if they wind up winning we would take the funds allocated for their projects buyback and burn wherever they landed on that top five spot and we would go and we would sweep the floor with those funds and then send the NFTs to the dead wallet. Okay. Nope. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Let me go back to the website here. Um, so uh, it looks like two things going on right now. There there's a pre-sale on the token. Is that correct? Is that going on right now? Pre-sale for the token starts February 7th. Live okay. launch is February 14th. Come fall in love with Oburn. We'll okay. probably piss off a couple girlfriends, but you know, <laughs> couldn't could not pass up that marketing opportunity. Oh yeah, you got it. Oh man, when you see a marketing opportunity, you got to capitalize. I totally get it. Um, so okay, so February um, is going to be the pre-sale. Is there going to be any special things about the pre-sale? Any special bonus, or what's the advantage of being in the pre-sale instead of just the the public launch? Yeah, so the pre-sale that it gives you the opportunity to catch it at that fixed price, right? Because if you have, um, uh, if you're trying to get in while it's live, you know, the price, it's going all over the place, you know, especially as we're filling out a lot of that pre-sale just from projects trying to buy it uh, to capture their voting weight at that fixed low price where there is no tax. Okay, gotcha. Very interesting. Uh, I'm thinking about my strategy. It's because I'm thinking, yeah, if there's these protocols that are waiting already to put in a whole bunch of money right on launch, then this could be a pretty powerful pre-sale. 
Um, are you worried at all about this huge pump on pre-sale from all these people kind of waiting to get in and then, you know, down from there or what, what's kind of your thoughts on how things are going to work? Well, there's two different ways that could go, right? You know, you're always going to have the people who treat it as a speculative play, right? Where they hop in and then they try to, you know, flip it during that mad rush. But I'm looking at it this way. If we're filling out the majority of our pre-sale just from protocols trying to buy it, all of their communities that are trying to match that so that they can get that, you know, 50,000, 100,000, who knows how many thousands dollar uh, buyback and burn. We know it's at least 50K minimum. Uh, then they're going to be trying to run in, you know, after we go live, especially if those protocols are buying up the majority of the pre-sale. If someone is trying to flip, hey, more power to them. Uh, that 10% of their sell burns, they all burn straight to the dead wallet. So thank you for helping us, you know, deflate our supply even faster. Uh, not to mention these protocols and these people who are buying O-Burn to then vote with, meaning that O-Burn is getting burnt when they vote not being sold beautiful no i really like that um again my mind's just going about how i you know it's a it's a good ama and a decent project when during the ama i'm trying to think about how i'm going to make money off of it um so that's uh that's that's good to see um so when let's see hoodie would like to know any bot attack prevention are you worried about bots on launch and those types of things yeah we have anti snipe protection uh, and plus our partnership is uh, with, or um, we have a relationship with Kyoto. We're going to be launching on their decks and there's some special routing that takes place, right? That uh, that way we can collect that buy tax and BUSD. And most of these bots are scripted for things like pancake swap. They're, they're designed for that swap router. So someone would literally have to custom code a bot specifically to try to snipe us on the kyoto swap.io and uh not to mention again we have anti-snipe on the first couple of blocks i'm not going to say how many because you know if you don't want to do that, right but i want to give away the secret sauce exactly yeah, yeah absolutely and like you said with the with the tax involved um bots aren't able to be as effective because they're up there automatically is going to be some taken off uh, the top, so they can't do you know a million transactions right off the bat or anything like that. Right, a hundred percent. And honestly, if a bot did somehow manage to flash loan, do you have any idea how big the buyback and burn pot would wind up becoming because of that ten percent that's just scalped as BOE right. and sent to the burn fund wallet? Like, holy cow! Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, that makes sense. Okay, so again, on the website here, um, the price appreciation for Oburn hyper deflationary. We've talked through that. Um, that's how it works. You've done a great job explaining it. Um, I'm always, this is why I love AMAs is because when I look at something, it's like, I kind of get it. But then when someone just explains it, I, I guess I'm just, a am an ear learner, a listener rather than a reader. Um, so that all makes sense. Can you talk about the NFT collection? Um, so that's, that's different than your token. Um, what's the purpose of the NFTs? When are those going to go on sale? Um, and some details on that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're waiting to release the NFTs until March 1st. Reason being, we did not want them to interfere with this mega buyback and burn event. We didn't want someone having one of the NFTs and then their dollars go further uh, than someone who maybe didn't have one, right? So those will be coming out March 1st. Uh, you'll be able to mint those on our website. And there's three tiers and they are very low supply NFTs. Uh, tier one, there's only 1,000 of them, and they boost your vote weight by 25%. Meaning, if you're voting with 100 O burn uh, to burn it towards the protocol you're voting for, it counts as if you burnt 125. Okay. All right. Very good. So then there's the three tiers. Um, very cool looking. I definitely get the theming. And you also sent me some other ones. Yeah, for um, tier three, because we, we haven't put those on our website yet, but we have okay. been some teasers about them. Should it, you uh, want me to? Oh, yeah, go for it. it. Go for it. Yeah, oh, no, no, uh, oh, no, no. Okay, yeah, here it is. So these are the tier three NFTs. So pretty cool looking. Yep, they're fully 3D modeled. They'll rotate around uh, on the actual NFT. I got to send them over to the animator, uh, but we're 
they're they're pretty sweet and those ones they boost your governance weight by 100 percent we've got quite a few protocols uh who have essentially um almost demanded that we get them a whitelist spot for that tier three uh because there's only 250 of them right and they want to have essentially like a sacrifice shrine where the protocol has one of the tier threes and the members of their community can send oburn to that wallet they'll do a burn vote from there for the protocol and then that doubles the governance weight of their entire community but like i said we're keeping those guys for march 1st uh that way our mega buyback and burn event with that minimum 50k pot isn't really affected by the dynamics and the strategy that the nfts bring to our ecosystem and uh i just want to say if you're from a project uh and your price has been going down a bit during the bear market maybe it's holding steady uh maybe you just want to see a nice price appreciation aspect on your token uh tell your project leaders about only burns and i challenge you guys to join the burn wars because it's going to be hot <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be hot you got all the marketing uh all the marketing phrases and things like that that's awesome i love it um so we had some people in the audience asking about the nft rentals you want to talk about the nft rentals sure sure yeah we can touch on that uh we're going to be releasing a new type of nft rent marketplace uh current ones they operate off collateral right if, if i'm trying to rent out an nft to james here uh he would put up some collateral and then my NFT actually goes into his wallet, uh, which then gives him the opportunity to run away with it if he wants to and never return it, in which case I just get the collateral. I don't know about you, but if I have an NFT that there's only 250 of, that also drips me out stablecoin based off of the treasury profit uh, each month, I'm not going to want someone to have the opportunity to run away with that. So we're making a new type that operates off of wrapping and there'll be a staking contract uh, or a rental contract that your nft moves into and then they receive a wrap version that has the same kind of voting power and so by keeping the total supply low we're ensuring that there's a strong secondary market demand for them as far as purchasing and two projects can come along and rent from you a tier three nft for a duration of one week and do their voting boost their governance weight and then you walk away with some happy passive income from renting out your NFT. Okay, very good. Nope, I love it. Um, let's see. There was another question I had. Oh, yes. So calls to action. So what is it that people can do right now? So we're kind of waiting for the pre-sale is going to kind of be the next thing. In the meantime, I would like everybody, every single person here, um, I would like you to hop into the Discord. Okay, hit the like button. Again, these are free options, so you should do it. But here is the uh, the link to the Discord. Hop in the Discord. Go follow on Twitter. It's only Burns DeFi on Twitter. Again, following on Twitter is free. There's really no reason to not do it. So go ahead and do that. Um, but then the next dates that we're looking forward to, can you remind us again when the token presale is, when launch is, and when the NFT is going to be launched again? Absolutely. So February 7th, that's when pre-sale goes live on Kyoto's launch pad. And then uh, February 14th is our live launch date. That's when we will list on their decks and our token will be live. And then the NFTs, those will come into play for the second month of our protocol's life. Uh, so those will go uh, available for mint uh, March 1st is when whitelist stage starts. That lasts for 24 hours and then it's public. Okay. Very good. And then if projects want to get in touch with you, if they want to be added into this, um, what's the process for them doing that? Yeah, simply either open a ticket in our Discord, uh, reach out to me directly. Chances are, you know me, I float around a lot. I run a consultation firm for DeFi that helps a lot of protocols. I believe you've actually reached out to me before for my consultation yep. firm services. So uh yeah uh chances are if you don't know where to find me find me in our discord uh i'm always active over there and uh would love to hear from you that list is filling up fast uh and i'm not, i'm not just saying that like i said i got seven projects just yesterday uh and i've already locked in two this morning while i was waiting for our ama <laughs> your audio is muted I think 
I think your audio is muted. Hold on. Can you hear me? Testing. 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 Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. I'll switch off of my uh, my mic um, just to my iMac old bad audio. Your friend Andy always makes fun of my audio. So this is going to be uh, this is going to be bad for me. Um, so, yeah, oh. if you want to get in touch, they hop into your hop to Discord, start a ticket there. Um, yep. Can you talk a little bit? We had some questions in the audience. And yeah, audience, if you have any other questions, let me know and we'll ask through those. Um, but can you talk a little bit more about what you're going to be doing with the treasury? So you mentioned burning 30%, 30% going to liquidity. What's the rest going to be used for? Yeah. So let me clarify. 30% buys our token back uh, from, from the, um, the liquidity pool, causing our own token to have price appreciation. Okay. Gotcha. Well, right. So that's 30%. Then we take another 30% of our treasury revenue and we pair it with the Oberm we just purchased and we add it to the LP to deepen liquidity pool. Because how many times have you invested into a protocol near the beginning and your bag goes up and suddenly it's worth, you know, $100,000. But if you were to go sell it, you'd get maybe 30,000 due to price impact and, you know, having a small LP. We don't want that to happen. I want people to be able to sell if they want to sell because the whole point of only burns is to benefit our holders and other protocols. Uh, I'm not even taking a salary from this. I'm I'm good on money, right? I'm here to build and have fun. Uh, so that's what our treasury is doing with that 60%. 10% goes to team salaries, which we utilize to hire additional developers, uh, maybe actually pay our, our awesome mods uh, that are here with us. And uh, again, I'm not taking a salary from that. Uh, that way I can put as much money back into growth of the protocol. 14% of the revenue is distributed to NFT holders. Um, you know, have 33% across all three tiers. So obviously the higher the tier with the lower amount of supply, they get more per. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that is the bulk of our treasury right there. 2% of our treasury uh, is allocated to purchasing Sphere token, which we will then stake to earn Matic as additional source of revenue for our ecosystem. That's through our partnership that we have with them. Uh, it's a mutually beneficial partnership. When uh, they're releasing a product soon called Dyson, which is a concentrated liquidity auto balancer, and our treasury is going to have a portion of it allocated to that to generate that sweet, sweet APR from concentrated LP farming. Okay, very good. Um, and Mountain Brother Productions would like to know why Kyoto Swap? Why'd you go with that? Yeah, so believe it or not, we actually had a couple of protocols um, reach out to us when we were still kind of in our infancy, uh, saying that they wanted us to list with them and had a lot of conversations. Um, and I really felt that we had a great rapport with Kyoto uh, and I love what they're doing. Uh, their, their DEX is creating what's known as regenerative finance. Uh, you know, so there's, there's just a lot of really cool stuff that they're doing. And we've had amazing support from their staff, amazing support from their team. They're just as invested in having our success take place as we are. Uh, so it's just a really great relationship. And I honestly, at this point, I, I, I wouldn't prefer anyone else in my corner. You know, they're, they're awesome to me. So, yeah, no, and it's amazing being partners with the, the decks that you're using, you know, cause if you go on pancake swap or something like that, it's going to be really hard. You know, you probably don't have streamlined communication with them and things like that. So I definitely, there's a lot of benefit there. Plus, they're able to put in that custom routing for us uh, because we have a smart contract that essentially uh, captures that 10% of the BUSD from the uh, the 10% buy tax, and they're they're more than willing to enable that custom routing for us so that we don't have to put sell pressure on our own token to do those buybacks and burns. So it's just a match made in heaven. Great relationship. Okay, awesome. Now, is burning kind of against the climate stuff that they're trying to? Are, aren't those kind of opposed to each other, or is there a, is no problem there? There's no problem there because if you think about it, the kind of volume that our protocol performs, right? You know, just running the numbers, theoretics, and and whatnot. 
uh, that's putting that transaction through their decks, right? Which in turn is actually helping because they have their percentage uh, that goes towards helping the world. Uh, and so we think it's a match made in heaven. You know, we're over here burning those, uh, burning those tokens that are using up all the energy, right? And then uh, all that volume taking place is in turn helping to benefit the environment. So we love it. Okay, very good. Um, and Funny Turo had a question for me. He said, James, are you buying a tier three NFT? And so, Cyril, maybe you can help me think through this because, um, you know, I'm, I prefer passive things. I'm not one to like go in and do votes and things like that. So for me, probably the token would just be a better hold for me than the NFT. The main benefit of the NFT is going to be the added governance while voting. Is that kind of the right way of thinking about it? And renting it out to other protocols for oh, money. That's true. I forgot about it. And that. getting your share of that 14% BUSD from our treasury revenue that's distributed to NFT holders. Uh, need I go on? <laughs> ah, so... So are you able to get, not financial advice, I'll put the uh, banner here, not financial advice, but if you were someone like me and you were wanting to put in, we'll say like $2,000 or something like that, how would you do it personally? Would you try to get in the pre-sale? Would you try to get a couple NFTs or is it is that part of the game theory and there's not really a, a set strategy? So there's a couple of different ways you could go about it, right? Uh, and obviously everyone uh you know please do your own research don't take my word for it right you know don't take don't take his word for it don't take my don't take your brother's word for it do your own research okay make sure that it makes sense for you uh but if i had 2000 uh that i was looking at putting into this i would probably do um i'd probably put it in the pre-sale and then sell 400 dollars worth after the initial pump to then set aside as busd to then get myself a tier three in March when that comes out, right? And then I could have that tier three. And if I'm just looking to do passive with it, I can rent it out when once the uh, rental marketplace comes out. Uh, in the meantime, as soon as that treasury mechanic is live, I'm getting 13% of the revenue that, the, you know, or I'm getting my share of the 14% of revenue that's distributed to NFT holders. Uh, so, you know, that's probably the strategy that I would take if my goal was that passive, passive revenue. And I will say, we're not talking about it publicly, but because it's you and you asked about passive, I will tease a little something. Ooh, we do okay. have another thing that we're working on that will probably actually be out before the NFT rent marketplace, but it will be single staking for the Overn token, no tax on deposit, no tax on withdrawal, and you'll be earning from treasury revenue based off of your percentage of that pool. Uh, we're firing up a second treasury for that. That's as far as I'm going to say. I, I can't say any more than that or or my okay. team will get very mad at me. <laughs> but I believe that real yield is great. It's an awesome thing to have. And instead of trying to add that later, let's have that going from close to the beginning, right? That way our holders who want to just sit on it and they don't want to use it for voting, have a place to put it to earn themselves yield in BUSD. Okay. I love that. You know, then it can be a part of my journey to 10 K a day in passive income. If I, uh, there you go. I've seen those videos. I've yeah. Seen, how close are you now? What's your current daily? I'm very uh, far. I'm very far. So we're, I might, there's a chance I might be redoing that series a little bit because when you have a goal like that, you sometimes make bad decisions to try and get towards that goal. And that might not be the best, you know, getting 10% a day to get to your 10K a day might not be the best option. So anyways, another topic for another day. Um, do you know what the what's the pre-sale price and public launch price? Yeah, I actually just responded to him on that uh, right there in the chat. So that is the pre-sale price, and it's the same price we're launching at, right? Um, we don't we don't really want to throw a whole bunch of people suddenly two x or anything like that. You're able to lock it at that at that fixed price if you're trying to get into the pre-sale and you don't have that ten percent buy tax. Uh, so your dollars going 10% further and, uh, yeah. Oh, I love, I love Toro's comment, right? Yeah. <laughs> How to become a billionaire in crypto. Start with a billion dollars. Yep. 
totally, totally get you there. Um, and then the website is just going to be the normal website or just people pay attention in Discord? Yeah, so our website is onlyburns.com. Uh, when the pre-sale is ready to go live, that little banner across the top will direct you to our Launchpad page uh, over at Kyoto. Uh, so you can you know, watch the countdown timer there. Uh, or if you're in our Discord, of course, we like to keep people updated. I will say I absolutely hate at everyone pings. I know that uh, I can't tell you how many servers I toss on full mute just because they at everyone ping too many times. We try to keep the amount of pings we're giving you low. The only time we ping people is if it's something cool or important that's actually people are going to want to see. So, you know, just. <laughs> yes. No, I appreciate that. My, uh, I'm in many, many Discord servers. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and just to verify, no, no sales tax for pre-sale tokens. Is that correct? Or just no buy tax? Yeah, there's no buy tax. Obviously, you can't sell it until the token goes live, at which point you're affected by the same 10% sell burn as everyone else. Uh, but there's no buy tax uh, when, if you're buying during the pre-sale. Once it goes live, yeah, that buy tax and sell tax are are in effect. And that, that sell tax, 10% burns the tokens to the dead wallet. Okay. Very cool. Well, no, this makes a lot of sense. Um, again, if people want to know my opinion on it, I will give my opinion. So first off, I love that you're not giving out a certain percentage a day. Those do not, that's not work. That's how tokens inflate super badly. So you're, everything you're giving is share of revenue or share of mm -hmm. um, actual money that's coming in. So you can't guarantee 1% a day or anything like that. So I really like that. Um, I will tell people it's still a space that is still, there's still a lot of risk in the space. So the same things are true. Don't risk more than you could afford to lose. Um, probably at some point, try to get out your initial. Don't leave everything in there forever. But um, same things. Yeah, Cyril knows. He would agree with all that. Um, and it's nice having a team, you know, a friendly face that I know is not going to rug pull me. So I appreciate that about these projects. So I have, I have three pluses um, for this project, in my opinion. Um, and I know you don't usually like to do this, but Tony says, what's your price prediction once it goes public? Um, oh, geez. So I, I absolutely hate doing price predictions. So instead, I'll give you numbers. Based off of the current APRs that the protocol, uh, the Dyson product from Sphere is producing during beta, with if we and based off the percentage of our treasury that will be in there if you take six months worth of just our treasury using 30 percent of our revenue and buying the token if you ignore any deflation nobody else buying uh and you know no um yeah nobody else buying and none of the tokens being burned if you ignore that uh, just our treasury making those purchases. I ran the XYK calculations. After six months, the token would actually go up 3x. So that's, again, there's a lot of variables. Nobody right. can do predictions on small cap tokens. Anybody who says that they can predict a small cap is, is probably lying to you. Uh, but, uh, you know, so just, and again, that's coming from 13 years of investment experience. Uh, managing my own portfolio, which is doing quite well, even despite the bear market. Uh, so, you know, just obviously do your own research. Throwing out random numbers is not something I like doing, uh, but that's that's currently my... Yeah, uh, no, that's some numbers. helpful things to think through for sure. Uh, and maybe last question, unless you have some other things that you want to add, if anybody else in the audience has any questions. Um, but where do you kind of see this going? If you look forward a year we'll, we'll do a year that's plenty of time in the crypto space um, but where do you kind of see this going and growing to as time goes on yeah so our our solid goal uh is i want the ecosystem to become self-sufficient completely self-sufficient and once our treasury mechanic is in place it has at that point become self-sufficient meaning if everybody stopped buying if every single person sold that treasury will keep chugging along, bringing in outside revenue, using 30% of that to buy the token and another 30% to add it to LP. So, uh, and once once our, our treasury just continually injects that revenue, it raises that, that bottom floor price if every single person sold, right? 
Uh, so my goal, uh, I've mapped things out over five years because I do have plans that go out that far for the ecosystem, but I want to see us become essentially a household name, uh, you know, at least in the DeFi space, right? Uh, projects being like, oh, do we have enough budget on the on this month to see if we can win a buyback and burn over at Only Burns? You know, other protocols thinking about us um, and and going from there, right? Uh, so yeah, I want to have our NFT rent marketplace out. I want to have our um, our single staking out. That'll actually come before the marketplace. Uh, and uh, just essentially, I want to see our token supply deflate. I have a key target in mind uh, because in our we are able to reduce that sell burn. Um, we're never able to increase it once we've reduced it. That's hard hard coded into our contract. So if we go from ten percent down to nine percent, we can never go back to ten percent. Right? It's now nine percent forever. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I want to see us hit like about. 70% supply deflation before we start like really kind of dialing back on how much is being burnt and everything like that. So, um, and I did see a question right here from Vermin uh, that I do want to tackle, if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Vermin says, what if Dyson flops and isn't doing anywhere near what the data showing three months down the line is? So the cool thing about the APRs with Dyson is that it's entirely driven by trading volume on quick swap. So, or sorry, Uniswap. Uh, I'm native Polygon chain. So, you know, uh, but uh, unless the world suddenly decides to stop using Uniswap, those APRs aren't going to change. If a bull market comes back, those APRs would increase because there's more volume taking place. Um, I would love for you to shoot me a DM or something. I'd be happy to share with you a video about how concentrated liquidity works. Worst case scenario, even if the product itself shuts down, I know how to manage Uniswap V3 strategies myself. I don't need an auto balancer to do that for me. It just makes my life a lot easier. Uh, it's very time consuming to manage your own treasury in V3 uh, exotic strategies. So that's why I'm, I'm super happy that Sphere is making Dyson. Uh, I think it's going to be a great product. And we do have contingency plans in place for if for some reason they decide to shut it down. But I mean, I don't see why they would since it's all driven off of volume. Not, it's not even dependent on TBL. It's all based off of swap volume. Okay. Love it. And uh, let's see. The cheatables.com says been following Cyril for a while. Absolute genius. This will do well and will be a long-term solid play in my opinion. Um, where can people find more of you? So we talked a lot about the project and again, follow on Twitter, hop into discord, wait for the token and the NFT and the NFT renting. What about if people just want to get in touch with you or know more about you or where should they go? Yeah, absolutely. So I do have a Twitter account. Uh, I'm terrible at remembering to update it. It's just at CyroKeer88. Ooh, 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 that's my birth year. Come find me. Uh, <laughs> if you happen to actually be in the uh, the northeastern area of the United States and you want to come over for dinner, uh, we actually, the Saturday before last, we had four uh, community members from Only Birds come over to our house and we made a full Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, so we're like, like I said, I'm publicly docs. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, you know, but if you want to know more about me, uh, we sprinkle a lot of that throughout the different AMAs. Uh, like I said, I started business management when I was 18 cause I lived in rural Virginia and I hated the fact that my internet was 14 kilobits a second. So my buddy and I, we started a microwave point to point broadband high speed internet tower, uh, business. And we had like six towers up. We had our fiber optic backbone from mid Atlantic broadband cooperative. Um, and we ran that business for about two years. FCC changed the regulations stating you had to purchase the right to use a frequency and Verizon bought the rights to our frequency out from underneath us for one and a half million. So we wound up having to shut down. Um, but, uh, yeah, so just, uh, you know, if you want to know about me, I'm, I am an open book, feel free to, you know, pop into our discord, ask me questions. I do have that Twitter account. I do have a LinkedIn account. You can probably find it pretty easily. But again, I'm terrible at remembering to update my social media. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. 
Perfect. Well, hey, Cyril, this has been great. I think this was really informative. Um, again, I know that it's a good AMA when it makes me excited about the protocol. And um, so I just appreciate you and what you're doing for the space and what you're building. And keep, please keep me in mind as you're going forward. Happy to get out tweets, YouTube shorts, whatever I can do just to help. I like connecting my audience with good projects. And we've seen so many bad projects in the space that when I find one, that I don't think is going to rug pull. It's like, I just want to latch. I want this to never end this AMA and just keep you on for the next five hours. Um, but yes, appreciate you coming on. Well, I appreciate you having us here to chat with you today. And, uh, you know, if, if we go to like two hours and 48 minutes, uh, you'd be right up there with how long your bonks AMA was. But that's too much for people to digest, you know, in, in uh, 45 minutes or whatnot. So I think this is the perfect length. But I'd love to just have a chat with you sometime. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that I'm sure that we could discuss just from global macroeconomics to, you know, how how Bitcoin was created and the cycles that it follows, like all sorts of fun stuff we can chat about. Yeah, it'll be, we'll have to meet up in person someday. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Next time I'm down that way, I'll swing on by. Yeah, if you're ever if you're ever in Nebraska for any reason, which no one ever is. Uh, but if you do happen to end up here, love to host you. So, well, hey. Sure. Yeah, and audience, I forgot to thank you guys. Appreciate you guys so much. Please hit like on the way out. Hop in Discord, follow on Twitter. Um, Cyril, thank you so much. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you.